Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here in the Turks and Caicos, and I'm here with Josephine Connolly, who's the Minister of Tourism, a fairly new Minister of Tourism, I believe. If you, how, how many months? Six months. Six months. So we're going to talk to Josephine about travel to the Turks and Caicos today, uh, what's going on in the tourism infrastructure. Um, obviously, this has been a tough period in the last 20 months, so we're going to talk about that and a whole lot more on Insider Travel Report. What is the state of tourism here in the Turks and Caicos right now? Um, that's a very good question. First of all, I want to say to you that tourism is the backbone of our economy. 70% um, of our GDP comes from tourism, and I believe that Turks and Caicos is the only country in the world that really depends on tourism for our livelihood. I think Moscow is also also depends on tourism, but I can be stand corrected. But um, at the moment, we are we have had a record-breaking summer. Yeah, that's great, and I, I, I noticed that, and I, I'm seeing the resorts, and next year looks pretty good right now as well, right? Yes, next year looks, looks good. Um, um, during the summer um, in June, we had an increase of 18 percent mm -hmm. of our arrival compared to 2019 and um, in July we had about um, 19 percent um, and we closed in September because that's the slowest month for all of the hotels mm -hmm. but we saw September was on par with 2019 which was a good year it was a very good year in October uh, with 10% with ahead in October. And we're looking good for November. We had 900 people for one resort arrived on Saturday. We had about eight airplanes on the ground at the same time. That's fantastic. Listen, this is the sweet spot of the Caribbean, right. and I am so happy to see that we were able, even though we had some unprecedented times, we were able to get through those. Um, well, let's talk about those because you you did have it's now I keep on saying 20 months it might be 21 months uh, you, you seem to have emerged very well so far but how did Turks and Caicos handle the downturn in tourism uh, since basically uh, March 20 well what we've done we took a calculated approach and um, we partnered with the Ministry of Health and other stakeholders and uh, we were able to um, put in the necessary protocols um, in place we also um, set up what we call a, uh, a portal. The portal was a mechanism where we were able to do screening of all our passengers. Mm -hmm. So that had worked very well for us. And we, we continue with our protocols. You know, there have been some changes. And I can recall in um, January when the United States said that they would like to see all of everybody, all the tourists coming back with um, a negative um, result with the, uh, with the antigen negative antigen which I just took today by the way but the so we we um, it was stakeholder engagement partnership we partnered with all the hotels the, the Palms um, Amanyara Ocean Club uh, they all jumped in and they were able to help us with all the testing so you know we didn't have the capacity to no, do all of, of that. Not. Now, what does it take for an uh, American traveler to come into Turks and Caicos today? What do they have to have? Well, they have to have a negative test. Right. And it's good that now every, everyone coming here, they must be vaccinated. So that makes it easier for us. And then you also have to fill out the health form yeah. online, right? Yes. And, and have all that stuff ready, right? Yeah, you have to fill out the health form. But uh, what I'm working on at the moment, I'm hoping that I can make it easier for all, with all these forms. We can morph the, the um, portal along with another uh, mechanism that we're looking at so that, you know, you can just fill in all your forms and not worry about that when you get off the that plane. That would be great, that would be great. You do have a lot of forms, but I'm here. So I guess I, I guess we filled them out correctly. It, it's a lot of forms, but I want you to know that you're coming to a safe place. And I, that is the positive, is that you know you've gone through, everyone is vaccinated, everybody has uh, 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 vaccination uh, cards, uh, everybody has a test, and, and you've all filled out the health form. So uh, I think we, have, we feel very safe. 
Yes, um, that's what we want. We want our tourists to feel safe because we depend on the tourists to come here. And we want them to have the best experience when they leave here. And one other thing I want to mention also, um, also would like to mention is that we are thinking about building a new airport. Oh, wow, that'd be fantastic, yeah. We need a new airport, so we're working on that. Um, everything is in motion for us to start a new airport and a new financial year. Now, let's, let's move to the question about that, because I had a question about infrastructure. What were you able to accomplish in terms of improving tourism infra infrastructure maybe during the past 20 months, and what's to come? And you said the new airport is one thing, right? Yes, the new airport is, is one thing. And um, what we are trying to do at the moment with tourism you see, in 1970, I think in the 70s, um, the soil industry was our main industry. And um, after the soil industry declined, uh, we looked at the financial services and we looked at the tourist board. Mm -hmm. So now we have to look at something different. We have to get with the times. It's 2021, and uh, we want to make sure that our tourism industry is sustainable. So one of the things that we are going to do we're going to um, transition the tourist board into a destination management organization mm -hmm. with a regulatory arm. We believe that all stakeholders must be a part of what we are doing here. And we also believe that uh, destination management will not only um, deal with the hotels, but it will also um, help the taxi drivers, the vendor markets, customs, immigration, you know, everybody will have a stake in the destination management. And we'll have this regulator, regulatory arm that will make sure that everything runs well. So in a new financial year again, we hope to um, set up the destination management. And at the moment, we are advertising for a consultant mm -hmm. to come and help us for a smooth transition. No, that would be great. And of course, one of the topics, and we didn't talk about this before, is, is everybody's talking about now is sustainable tourism. And I know you, you might have participated recently with the Glasgow conference, I think. Uh, what I heard is that Turks and Caicos was there. Uh, what is Turks and Caicos doing on the sustainability front uh, to make this? Because obviously, you know, these, these destinations are disappearing maybe in the next 40, 50, 60 years if, if we don't do something, right? Yes, well, we are low-lying islands and we are susceptible to high tides and, and also um, hurricanes. Mm -hmm. And um, attending the COP26 was a great experience for me. And um, one, of the thing, one, one, one of the things I learned is that climate change is real. Mm -hmm. So we, we are back here, and f the first thing I have done with my team, um, we were a part of a Blue Belt um, seminar last week. Mm -hmm. We had all our partners from the, U from the UK came down, and we had a, the Blue Belt um, program. The Blue Belt program helped us to manage what we have, okay. and we have about 36 sites that we manage. So that program was um, helpful. And what I'm going to do next week, I am going to conduct some seminars and educate our people what climate change is all about. Right. And you know, during the um, conference, the small countries like us were saying, so you big countries, you need to help us. Mm -hmm. Because that was part of the, the Paris Agreement. Sure. So we, we, we had a great conference, and um, I met with a lot of um, um, partners from the OT, from the overseas territories like myself, and we had a good conversation. We met with so many people asking for help and asking them to come down and help us. So we have a lot of programs set up at the moment, and um, along with me was my director from um, DCR. Um, she was with me, and um, she helps me with the environment. Right. So we have all these programs in place to um, to um, to carry out 
um, in the next few weeks. Yeah, no, and it is so important. I mean, I think hopefully the Glasgow Conference illustrated how important sustainability is, and especially to people, to tourism, uh, where, you, where you're so dependent on it. Now, one of the things I did want to talk about for 2022, what are kind of the marketing programs and the, the, the campaigns you're going to roll out if you or may have already some in place to, uh, although it sounds like you already have doing pretty good business right now, so I don't know if you're going to be able to get more, but what are you going to, how are you going to try to get more American Americans to come uh, to Turks and Caicos? Well, promotion, promotion, promotion. And um, as I said, with the destination management, um, we will be working together, all of our stakeholders, to help us promote this place. And, um, and for our next budget, for our next budget, we supposed to move on new premises because we have to have a place to um, accommodate Mm -hmm. our people when they come here and we're going to change the face of the tourist board mm -hmm. so um the destination management consultant he is to help us drive this mm -hmm. so i'm looking forward to um meeting him or her in the next two months okay um i think we're going to start um to to look at all of the proposals we received six proposals so far for this job and hopefully we'll get going in a new year that would be great and I, I know that you know you are having a good year so so far and next year it'll be hopefully even better but um, any other strategies and policies you want to talk about uh, in your role as minister going forward we have a tourism strategy and we also have a KPMG report um, 2015 that we're being guided by. It's a very good pro report and I encourage you to read it. Okay. Now, what would you tell, we go out to about 95,000, as I was saying, travel advisors in the U.S. What would you tell them about selling Turks and Caicos today? Turks and Caicos is a beautiful place, uh, beautiful people. Um, we have um, I want them to come and enjoy our, cult, our rich culture. We have four islands that I would like for them to visit, and each of them have their own unique um, history. You have North Caicos. We have a lot of... Um, um, North Caicos is like um, the luscious, very lush in vegetation. Okay. Um, that's where our farmers are. And um, we have a 7,000 feet wall in Grand Turk, the best diving that you can find. Mm -hmm. um, we have the cruise center in Grand Turk. We have cruise tourism in Grand Turk that was gonna start in December. So they can come by cruise boat. Um, I'll also encourage them to um, visit our caves in Middle Caicos. South Caicos, we have our, um, the spiny lobster Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. I, I had some lobster the other night. I don't know if it was from there or not, but uh, that's great. And in Sol Key, you have the whale watching. Okay. So I want them to come and have a good experience with us. I mean, you can find sea and sand anywhere, but I can assure them that they will have a good experience once they get here. And there are also some marvelous resorts here on Providencia. Oh, those are amazing. The best resorts five star we have the best resorts in the caribbean yeah so if you're looking for a, a place for your luxury clientele this is probably it this is the place to come thank you very much for agreeing to to to, to interview interview with me minister and i look forward to a great 2022 and much more to come thank you very much this is the sweet spot of the caribbean so come and bring your friends with you bring your friends with you absolutely or book your clients now I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.